I started um, listening to the podcast, did that you know, for probably a couple of years before I connected with your investment counselor. She did a great job of kind of holding my hand through the process. I probably one of the, the more needy uh, clients she worked with, but ended up buying my first property in 2011 in Atlanta and then waited a, couple, a few more years until my next one, but uh, 2014 purchased in Memphis. And so that's kind of where I am at, at this point. Welcome to the Creating Wealth Show with Jason Hartman. You're about to learn a new slant on investing, some exciting techniques, and fresh new approaches to the world's most historically proven asset class that will enable you to create more wealth and freedom than you ever thought possible. Jason is a genuine, self-made multimillionaire who's actually been there and done it. He's a successful investor, lender, developer, and entrepreneur who's owned properties in 11 states, had hundreds of tenants and been involved in thousands of real estate transactions. This program will help you follow in Jason's footsteps on the road to your financial independence day. You really can do it. And now, here's Welcome your to host, episode 1155, 1155. This is Jason investors. Hartman. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I want to first off apologize if there's a little bit of background noise. It won't be long. I'm actually in the car headed to the airport for Meet the Masters of Income Property. We got a very exciting weekend ahead. Just super excited. One of the things I, I have to say I'm most excited about is uh, Drew's presentation on self-management. I think that's just going to be phenomenal. I went through it with him two nights ago, and it is really, really interesting. Uh, you know, we're all about the empowered investor here, and my goal is to empower millions of investors to uh, take control of their financial future, and that's what we're doing. Do you hear the rain in the background? It is, uh, it is really raining in Florida. <laughs> anyway, before we get to our guest today, and I think you're going to enjoy this guest interview, I want to play for you one of my blogcasts that I think will be very interesting to you. So let's, uh, let's hear that real quick, and then we will uh, be back for a moment with me and then our guest today. All ROI is not created equal. The term ROI, or return on investment, is a common benchmark for evaluating different investment alternatives. For people used to the stock market, it is generally assumed to be the appreciation in price of a security from the time it is bought to the time it is sold. Many people who are familiar with income property investment have come to know the IDEAL, or ideal, framework for evaluating investment returns. I is income, cash flow from your investment. For income property, this typically takes the form of rent revenue. For stocks, it takes the form of dividends. For a business venture, it comes from your sales to customers. And for bonds, it comes from interest payments. Income is one of the most important investment characteristics because it provides consistent cash flow that does not depend on a future sale or increase in equity value. D is for depreciation. Investment strategies that involve the purchase of physical property, such as real estate or equipment, can benefit from depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash expense that recognizes the reduction in usable value for a piece of property over time. Its power in driving investment returns is that it shields your income from taxation so that it can be reinvested to produce greater gains. E is for equity. Some investment strategies such as income property or business ventures make use of a self-liquidating loan to finance the purchase of physical property. As the loan payments are made, it systematically results in an increase in wealth for the investor since part of the payment goes toward an increased equity stake in the property. This aspect of investment is most powerful if the loan payments are financed by revenue from a customer or tenant. A. Appreciation. The most typical investment strategy for generating value is appreciation. This is when the value of a stock or the value of a property increases over time. It has the potential to generate fantastic rates of return if values adjust upward very quickly, but can also bring danger if values collapse. Furthermore, appreciation is only realized when the investment asset is sold. 
This can lead many investors to think they have made money when the value of an asset increases, but they do not sell, only to see the value of their asset plunge when market sentiment shifts. L is for leverage. The use of other people's time and money constitutes leverage. Leverage allows an investor to amplify the impact of their money. It can produce tremendous gains and tremendous losses. For income property investors, leverage typically comes from the loan used to purchase their property. For business owners, leverage comes from the people that are employed to run their company. In both cases, it results in amplified profits during expansionary times and amplified losses during times of contraction. One of the great traps that many investors fall into is the assumption that all ROI is the same and that a dollar of returns is just a dollar of returns. This viewpoint fails to comprehend the impact of volatility on investment returns. Many people with 401k investment accounts have seen multiple charts showing the long-term rate of return for the U.S. stock market and assume that those returns will continue to compound out into infinity. Many other people saw large amounts of money being made by home flippers who purchased property, quickly renovated it, and then sold it for a considerable profit. In both cases, people see a big payout that can be highly volatile, but fail to see the volatility. The other end of the spectrum comes from people who dislike the perception of volatility and choose to invest in fixed income securities with guaranteed principal value. These financial instruments are certainly less volatile, but frequently fail to keep pace with inflation. Some people do find debt instruments that exceed the rate of inflation, but that return comes with an increased risk of default that is not always comprehended by the investor. Astute investors understand that ROI really separates into both stable and volatile categories. Returns from income, depreciation, and equity are typically stable whereas returns from appreciation and leverage are more volatile. It is important to understand that all five elements are important parts of a holistic investment strategy, but excessive emphasis in any one to the exclusion of others can spell disaster. Income property investors have benefited from the five drivers of ROI for quite some time by prudently investing in assets that produce significant income generate tax deductions, build equity through a self-liquidating mortgage, and still generate potential gains from appreciation through leverage. It creates a holistic strategy for building wealth that is very difficult to replicate in the financial markets. A typical example of this is an investment property that is purchased at a discount from a distressed seller in a region with strong rents. Once the property is purchased and rehabilitated, it will generate income from rents paid by the tenant. If the property is prudently purchased in a strong area, this rent revenue should exceed the mortgage payment and expenses by a comfortable margin. This will also generate regular net cash flows that can be reinvested into future projects. It will also result in the systematic building of equity from the self-liquidating loan, even if no appreciation occurs. In addition to this, the investor may qualify for depreciation benefits that will reduce their tax liability. If the property is purchased with leverage, it will also amplify the impact of any future price appreciation, but will not cripple the investor if the price declines since the rent revenue is sufficient to cover the mortgage payment. By constructing your investments in this fashion, it effectively blends all five ROI factors to create a balanced portfolio of stable value with upside value potential and limited downside risk. Ultimately, it becomes quite clear that not all ROI is created equal. There is no one form of value that is inherently better or worse than another is. Rather, it is about a creation of a blended value portfolio that balances the value drivers effectively to generate wealth and prosperity. This kind of holistic value cannot be found in the financial markets. Only investors who are astute enough to recognize the opportunity and assertive enough to act will be able to build this type of wealth portfolio. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. We are going to be adding some more clips to the shows, the episodes ahead. 
I interviewed Frank Gallinelli, who uh, is an expert in real estate investing metrics, and uh, we will probably publish that interview next week. He, he was on the show before. He was uh, kind enough to uh, provide some of his materials, uh, some interesting little lessons that I think you'll enjoy, and we'll be playing those on future episodes. So uh, look for more uh, interesting little clips like this, like the blogcast, like Frank's material, some of Garrett Sutton's material, maybe Tom Wheelwright as well. He's, uh, of course, speaking at Meet the Masters this weekend, uh, talking about uh, tax-free wealth. And so uh, a lot of good stuff coming up. Anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get to our guest today, Cliff Hayden, and uh, let's talk more about investor empowerment. Here we go. It's my pleasure to welcome Cliff Hayden. He is the founder of Show Me the Rental, and this is a self-management tool. It is such a great time to have all of this technology that can help us become empowered investors. And that's what we're all about on this show, empowering millions of investors to take control of their income properties, to take control of their financial future. And this is another one of many potential tools out there. Cliff, welcome. How are you? I'm great, Jason. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah, good to have you on. You are a real estate investor. I guess you were probably frustrated with the process of leasing properties, so you created a tool to help make that easier, right? Correct. Okay, fantastic. Well, what happened? What was just, you know, very quickly, what was kind of the seminal moment that brought this about? My wife, actually. I was so busy in real estate and had so many things going on. Uh, that I didn't have a lot of free time. So mm-hmm. I would actually come home for dinner with, I, got, I actually got five kids. Mm-hmm. So I would come home for dinner at night. If I had empty rental houses, I would be on the phone, email, texting back and forth, not really being present. So my wife, I tell everybody, if you remember Superman, when he looked at you and his eyes got real red and could shoot lasers out of his eyes, that's kind of what my wife felt like because mm-hmm. I was we were having a bad home life. So right. uh, I was just so busy working, so busy trying to do what I thought was a good father, which was put food on the table, but I was kind of missing the big picture. So I just knew I had to do something different and and put some systems in place. So I went out and tried to find systems that did this automatic screening and Mm -hmm. pre-screening, and I couldn't find anything. And so then we just decided to create one. Okay. I think it's important first to define tenant screening. What is tenant screening? Now, most people think it's, okay, the tenant fills out an application and you run their credit report. Hopefully you run a criminal background check too. And that would be like a sort of a complete screening in terms of the you know, a specific task, but it might include uh, checking uh, job references, could even verify bank accounts, you know, of course, interviewing the potential tenant and so forth. There's an issue of defining screening because your system does part of it, but not all of it yet. But what's kind of good about that is it allows people to use other tools with your system. It's it's complimentary, right? So, uh, for example, uh, you know, we've had Cozy on the show a few times. You know, some of our clients use that. Some of our clients use other tools. There are many of them out there nowadays to do screening, to do rent collection. You can do the screening yourself. And when I say screening, I'm talking about like running a credit report and criminal. What does your system do and how does it save investors time? So what our system does is it kind of, um, I picture like a big funnel. So if you had empty rental houses before, you just in our area, um, you get a just a truckload of emails and phone calls and inquiries about the house, and a lot of them are qualified to even view your house. So my thought of screening a tenant is it's in line with my lifestyle of what I want out of a customer, what type of houses that I particularly buy, um, which we're not going to go into that. So this system is built to kind of, I want to say, screen these tenants so you're not wasting your time with people that aren't qualified to go view your house. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it just cuts out so much time uh, because you don't have to talk to them. You don't have to deal with them. You don't have to uh, even associate with them until you get a paid application, which our system automates that whole process and the showing process. And then once you get a paid application, then we go in there and then, because everybody's management's different on how they screen people, like you just said, with background checks, criminal checks, bank statements, W-2s, paycheck stubs. So everybody's different on how they screen, Section 8, not Section 8. So this system just kind of weeds all those people out and gets you those 10 or 12 qualified leads and applications, and then you kind of go from there. Okay. So tell us about, you know, mechanically exactly how it works. The owner, landlord, would set up an account on your site, 
and they'd pay what forty nine dollars, and that's a one time fee, right? Uh, until the property's rented, is that correct? Correct. So, okay. so basically, what we did is we created an online system. It advertises for you to all the major websites, generates leads, and so when a tenant will go on a Zillow and find your house. Instead of them contacting you, it's going to contact our system. Mm -hmm. Tell me what contact your system means. It means what? They click on a link? I, I mean, doesn't Zillow require that there be phone numbers in there or something? There always seems so, to be. There does. That's a great question. And, and so every city we have is, uh, has a show me the rental phone number. Oh, okay. So you put your phone number in there. Um, so nowadays, you know, there are still people that use phones. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> a little <number>. bit. <laughs> yeah. And, but our system tries to gear them towards their cell phone which would be through text messages or through um, our email. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they'll ask your pre-screening questions. I'm sorry, they'll answer pre-screening questions that you selected from our system. And then once they pass those qualifying questions, we'll then set them up to set up a showing, which is done automatically through our system also. Okay, so, so let's review what the system does then. It fields inquiries from yes. Zillow, from all of the websites that you aggregate the content to, right? Do you include Craigslist in there? We have not yet because Craigslist, you can't post to, you have to manually do it. Yeah, so right. we're not- I had, a fe I had a feeling you'd say that. Okay. But they could use Craigslist or some other non-participating site, I assume, and put the link in that you supply. You supply each Correct. investor a link for a specific property, right? Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Okay. And then the applicant prospective tenant can go and click on that link. And that's where it asks them the screening questions, right? Yes. Okay. So Give you, us you, you'll gather up what another cool thing about it. It's a database. So you mm -hmm. actually have a huge database of everybody that inquired about your system. Mm -hmm. And we also have- You mean your, prop your property? Yeah. Property. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Your property. And we also have a cross-reference database system built. Once they fill out a profile, we can go ahead and automatically match them up with properties in our system already, mm -hmm. which is a very cool feature. So if, so say for instance, if I want to look, my, one of our heavy zip codes is 40207. So we might have right now a potential of 40 tenants that are already looking at 40207. Once you put your property on there, it'll reference that against the questions you have versus what they answered in our profile and send them the house automatically. Okay. Which is so so cool it might provide some leads too, but let's Correct. just assume that that's a perk and it may may or may not happen. I'm not going to, let's just use it as a, as a tool. Okay. So give us an example of some of these screening questions it would ask. How many questions are there? What kind of questions would you want to ask? You can make your own or use your, your suggested questions, right? You cannot make your own as of yet. So basically we have around 30 questions and they're based on lifestyle, your income levels, pets, you know, different things that you're going to want to know. Okay. And so basically a sample question is how long have you been on your current job? Mm -hmm. That would be one question. A big one we have is, are you on Section 8? Mm -hmm. Another question would be, you know, one of my favorites is, do you have tools and can you complete small jobs like unclogging toilets? I'm concerned that you might run afoul of fair housing laws if you're not careful with this. You got to be. It's, well, we a really, our it's, a, it's a really touchy subject nowadays. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. OK. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. OK. I, so yeah, we, we definitely all like handy people in our properties. There's no question. Yeah. Well, they're not disqualified. Yeah. It's just a question we ask. Yeah, right. OK. Do you have a co-signer? Mm -hmm. How much money do you have in all your bank accounts? Do you ever sublet? How long do you anticipate staying in the home? When do you plan on moving in? Are you a smoker? Yep. How many people will be living with you? You know, provide credit references from your employer or former landlord. Mm -hmm. Are you convicted of a felony or currently awaiting trial for a felony? So just questions like that. These, uh, these, are, these are all the questions that this takes the repetitive nature out of it, right? You let yes. the technology okay. do this repetitive work, which makes it a lot easier. And it's sort of easy on the fly for an investor to forget to ask one of these questions. So do you require that the prospective tenant answer all the question? Will it not let them go to the next page or complete the application without answering? So basically what will happen is we have some investors that use it that they don't even ask questions. They just want to get the lead information. They want mm. to get their name, phone number, email. Got it. So you don't have to ask questions, but okay. if they answer the questions incorrectly, it'll say, sorry, you do not qualify to be mm. this property. These are yes or no questions always, right? Correct. Okay. And yes. so you put the criteria in there as well. That's interesting. That's like another layer. So it's not just you'll get the answers to the questions, you'll get the actual screening and you'll only get the tenants that answer the way you want. Correct. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. It's like a big funnel. So you're not, because that's what we found out. It's a great mm -hmm. question is we were asking the same questions over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And you might go through 
80, 90 people before you find those few that are qualified. And it just, we, so we just automated that whole process. Okay. And then what's next? They answer the questions and everything worked out on the answers. So everything was good there. Then what? Is there a link that is provided to the prospective tenant that says, you know, go here to apply and then it's the application and that'll run their credit and background check? Is that the next step? Correct. So the next step is once they pass, It'll send them showing instructions based on how you show your properties mm -hmm. via sign out a key at your office, an appointment, an open house, a lockbox, however you. Yeah, it could be an electronic lock. And, you know, yes, that's however you show, you'll mm -hmm. give them that information. Okay. And then from there, after they view the house, it'll send them a link for an application. Now, you, we have an online application, like a generic one, or if you have your own, like we use Buildium. So we have our own applications. Mm -hmm. So we put our link in the system, so it sends them Buildium's link to Buildium's our application, mm -hmm. and then from there they fill it out. Once they fill it out, we get notification, and uh, we start screening. That's fantastic. Okay, good. Anything else? Are there any other features you want people to know about? No, that's basically it. I'm really impressed with uh, it's such a time saver. That's all I can say. We I actually can sit home at dinner at night with my kids now, and I don't have 50 things going on. I'm kind of slowing down with it, and this Good. system does it all while I can do, I'm can do. i doing everything else I need to do. Yeah, that's fantastic. In terms of the cross-referencing of the tenants, where basically it can take tenants and send those tenant leads to other properties, right, if they don't match with this one, anything else you want people to know about that or, you know, how many leads can they get? Is it an unlimited number? number or, um, you know, how, how does that work? And then maybe anything else on the way, you know, you fill out your property's profile. I assume you upload photos, description and address, and, and then it aggregates to all these other websites that it's, you know, how, how many websites, which websites I know Zillow, of course, we mentioned anything else on those two components of it. Yeah, it does all the, all the major ones, Zillow, truly uh, hot pads, Basically, all of them at like Craigslist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think we're on. I want to say twenty something, almost thirty something websites. Okay, and then when the property is leased, it takes them off of those sites. I hope, right? Well, once you lease the property, you will go into the system and just turn it off. Okay, and then, and then it'll, it shuts everything down. It'll shut it off. That's so convenient. Yep. And, and there are other products that do that. That part I know. Other products do that, but I don't know if they have the same kind of screening questionnaire that you have, which is interesting. You know, it aggregates the pictures, syndicates those on all of these websites as well, right? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Anything else you want people to know? No, not really. Just I hope it helps people. It's a huge time saver for us and it's kind of give me some time back in my life. Yeah. And for forty nine dollars, uh, we made it as cheap as we possibly could to uh, get people some help and kind of get some time back. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty new product, right? How long? Uh, when did you launch? We just launched uh, literally a little less than a year ago. OK. We've been working on it for a while and tweaking it. And now, um, yeah, we just launched less, little, less than a year ago. Like how many investors are using it so far? Uh, right now, we're about, I want to say between 40 and 50 active mm -hmm. is about what we have right now. Okay. Any tips beyond your system that you just want to share? Just anything that you want to share in terms of general property management tips that you can share with our listeners before you go, Cliff? You know, I kind of give you my life experience. When I got into this, I bought hot and heavy for a lot of years and built up a lot of rentals and was just miserable. I just had too much stuff going on. So my thought on management is figure out what kind of lifestyle you want to have mm -hmm. and then build your portfolio based on that. So I, we've kind of spent the last six, seven years upgrading our portfolio to A and B properties mm -hmm. so I can travel with my kids all summer now. I don't have to worry about a lot of headaches going on. Mm -hmm. Our customers are really nice, good people mm -hmm. and uh, we have good relationships. And so that works for us. I'm not saying that works for everybody, right. but I would just say build your system and your management company on your kind of principles and what you like doing. Mm -hmm. And I think it become for me anyway, it became a lot easier and I enjoy my life and my kids a lot more, which is very nice. My wife's a lot happier, which is also very nice. Yeah, good, good. That's, that's good advice. What do you love about real estate? I like doing deals. So, so right now we're big on tax-free investing. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing a lot of option deals and stuff in my IRA and just learning new techniques and new strategies to help people out. Mm -hmm. Whether you're working on cash flow, growth, investment, management, um, whatever part you're working on, I like doing the deals and talking to people and, and seeing a situation and, and figuring out how to help them out. I get a lot of uh, fulfillment from that. Good stuff. Cliff Hayden, thanks for joining us. The website is showmetherental.com. Think of Jerry Maguire, but instead of money, rental, which <laughs> equals money either way, right? Showmetherental.com. Cliff, that's thanks. That's where we got the name from, too. Good, that's pretty good. Good stuff. Thanks again, Cliff. Thank you, Jason. 
Thank you so much for listening. Please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. Be sure to check out the show's specific website and our general website, HartmanMedia.com, for appropriate disclaimers and terms of service. Remember that guest opinions are their own, and if you require specific legal or tax advice or advice in any other specialized area, please consult an appropriate professional. And we also very much appreciate you reviewing the show. Please go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio or whatever platform you're using and write a review for the show. We would very much appreciate that. And be sure to make it official and subscribe so you do not miss any episodes. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you.